Hello and welcome. If you're looking to get started on Hell of Deuce, you're in the right place. Before making this video, I watched all the video guides for this game on YouTube and I didn't find them all that useful, so here we go. I hope you will get as much knowledge from this video as I got from my first 10 hours with the game. So keep watching if you want to start the battle like this instead of being your squad's opum. I'm going to go over soldier classes, the roles, how to drive tanks, tips on how to read the map, the importance of terrain, how to use the artillery and the best things that you can do to get a jump start on understanding the game. My goal here is for you to have little to no questions about anything that you'll encounter when you start playing. But before we get started, if you enjoyed this video, if you like the sound of my voice and the encyclopedic knowledge that I'm about to lay down, Please subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends, your pet dog, or that weird uncle that seems obsessed with the Second World War. Okay, let's get down to business. As soon as you join a server, you'll be prompted to join a side and either create a unit or join an existing one. Do not create a unit if you're just starting out. If you do, you'll be forced into the role of squad officer and you'll get into the officers and commanders voice chat as well as that of your squad and soon you'll have trouble performing the most basic task in the game while seven different people are talking to you at the same time. So join a unit. Units are divided into three types, infantry, armor and recon. Recon units are two-man squads consisting of an observer and a sniper. Armor crews consist of three people, a tank commander and two crew members. You need to be part of an armor crew to drive any of the tanks, which require a driver, gunner and spotter. More on that later. Infantry squads are what most of the team will be playing as. Once you join an existing infantry unit, you'll be prompted to select a soldier class. The only piece of equipment that is common across all soldiers is the two bandages that you get for treating wounds. The rifleman, assault and automatic rifleman are your most basic classes. The I want to shoot stuff classes that focus on firepower and the ability to attack enemy positions. They each have different weapons that range from slow fire rate and great long range accuracy for the rifleman to high fire rate and lower accuracy for the automatic rifleman class. Every class gets two grenades, but the assault class also gets two smoke grenades which are great to cover your movements. So a little tip for using smoke in this game and in any other game, make sure to throw your smoke grenades as close to the enemy as possible to cover their line of sight or to cover a specific part of exposed terrain. Don't run through the smoke towards the enemy because you'll come out the other side with no idea of what's ahead of you and the enemy will see you before you see them. Smoke is concealment, it is not temporary cover. Riflemen also get an ammunition box that you can lay down on the ground for anybody to use to resupply their equipment. You can only use it once and you will not get additional ammo or bandages by using it, you just restore the amount that you start with. If you drop one of these boxes down, make sure to let people nearby know. And on that topic, if you're having trouble telling friend from foe, Make sure to check your gameplay options and adjust the display of name tags to 500 or 250 meters. The medic can revive down players from your team with an infinite syringe that never dries up and you also carry 20 bandages that you can use to heal their wounds. Once you revive somebody they will need to be bandaged right away so make sure that you do that since they might have run out of their own bandages or might need to use them later and they can only carry two at a time. As a medic you only get two magazines for your rifle, so you will run out of ammunition if you're playing like a regular soldier. You shouldn't play as a soldier that can also heal, but rather as a healer that can sometimes shoot. Use your weapon for self-defense against immediate threats. You should be running behind your squad, never taking point and trying to stay alive as much as possible. Having to respawn might force your team halfway across the map, making your ability to revive soldiers one of the best tools your team has to keep moving forward. The machine gunner is fairly straightforward. You get a machine gun which you can place over a piece of cover by pressing F. Machine guns are absolutely vital for defensive positions since they can provide suppressive fire over an advancing enemy which will momentarily blind players making them completely unable to aim. If you're being suppressed your whole screen darkens and shakes rendering you pretty much helpless. 
So your role as a machine gunner is not necessarily to wait to see the enemy and shoot to kill, but rather shoot towards enemy positions to prevent them from shooting or even moving in the first place. The support class is where things start to get trickier. Support players are essentially standard riflemen that can build supply crates. What are supply crates, you might ask? They are fixed amount of resources that can be used by other soldier classes to build static defenses like barbed wire or sandbags or garrisons. Garrisons are one of the two types of spawn points an officer or spotter can build. The other one is an outpost. Outposts only allow your own squad to spawn while garrisons work for anyone in the team, making them absolutely crucial. Enemy garrisons and outposts can be destroyed by walking near them, but only garrisons can be destroyed by explosives like AT rockets or tank rounds. As a support player, your first order of business is to lay down supplies where people might need them. If your squad leader doesn't need them for a specific garrison somewhere, you might want to lay them down where some engineer might want to build something. And since we're at it, engineers carry anti-personnel mines and anti-tank mines, both of which I believe are pretty self-explanatory. You won't be getting any team kills from them, so feel free to place them wherever you want. Engineers can also repair tanks with their wrenches or build a wide variety of defensive structures and resource nodes. Resource nodes generate a set amount of resources per minute like fuel, ammunition or manpower and how much they generate depends on how far into the map they are placed. The resource they generate can be used to fire the fixed artillery positions back in your headquarters or used by the commander to call in stuff like airstrikes. Lastly, the anti-tank. As an anti-tank, you get your team's standard rifle and grenades as well as a bazooka and a tool that you can use to build an AT gun emplacement, provided that there are enough supplies nearby. Now, depending on the tank that you're shooting and where your shot lands, you might damage them or you might be doing no damage at all. If you shoot an enemy tiger in the front, for example, you're probably just wasting your ammo. Try to get someone to provide smoke and cover fire for you to be able to flank the enemy tank and take him down. There are detailed guides on each of these classes provided by the developers of the game, so I will just link to them in the video description. The only class that I didn't get too much into is the officer. If you're just starting out, I highly recommend that you don't play as an officer, but once you decide that you're ready, I would recommend you start by creating a recon unit. This will give you the role of observer, which is basically an officer, but instead of being in charge of five other guys with different roles and different utilities, you'll be in charge of one lonely sniper who will love you for even giving him the opportunity to play as one. As observer, you'll learn stuff like how to communicate with other squads and with your commander, how to use your binoculars for spotting enemies, and the basics of building outposts and garrisons. Okay, now that you understand the basic composition of the team, let's get on to some of the gameplay. After selecting the soldier class, you'll select a spawn point on the map. Remember what I said earlier about garrisons and outposts. Every spawn point that you can select is either a garrison or your squad's own outpost. Try to spawn as close to the squad leader as you can and move as a cohesive unit. You should see him on the map as the largest green unit. If he is far away from any spawn point, ask if he can drop an outpost for you to spawn in. The time to spawn is also shorter for outposts than it is for garrisons. If you see your squad members aren't communicating and your squad leader is basically missing in action, then consider switching to another squad as you will learn much, much more from a squad leader that talks and coordinates with his squad. For starting out, I would recommend that you play as a medic if you can, because you'll get kill markers around your downed teammates, which will provide you with a better understanding of what's going on around you. And you'll also be helping your team a lot by reviving other players. One of the most important tools at your disposal while playing the game are your voice chat buttons. X is for the channel that only commanders and officers can access, so pressing it if you're not an officer will do nothing. C is for talking to your own squad, and V is a proximity-based chat that will let you talk with whoever is close by. Use this to call for medics, request resupplies, or call out enemy positions. 
You can also pinpoint enemies by pressing down on your mouse wheel, but this will only be seen by your own squad and these callouts fade after a few seconds, so keep that in mind. Officers are the only ones that can put down permanent markers on the map. You can press T to see a heads up display showing current objectives and markers as well as stuff like player markers and how many magazines or grenades you have left. The map provides a lot of valuable information, such as the location of roads, forest, tall grass and some of the structures on the map. Use this to plan your movements. More often than not, taking the shortest, most direct approach to a location will get you shot, while taking a longer, more concealed approach will allow you to flank the enemy and provide a better attacking position. You'll often find trenches on the sides of roads or fields, which are great for covering your movements. Even a slight elevation in terrain can conceal you if you're running while crouched or crawling. If you're coming in from games like Battlefield, just remember all it takes here is one shot for you to go down, so keeping out of sight is your first line of defense. Whenever you're moving, unless you know for a fact that no enemies are around, try to keep yourself concealed from any possible firing positions. You'll run across a lot of bushes and hedges in the game which can't be jumped or crossed over, even with a tank but some of them can be shot through, so if you're defending a position and notice enemies behind one, you can try unloading your weapon, especially if you're using a machine gun, you will at least get some suppression effect out of it. Lastly, I'll get into the basics of tanks and artillery. As I mentioned earlier, tanks are controlled by three people and spawn at fixed locations at the edge of the map. The driver, which is position 1, controls the tank using WASD, but you'll first need to start the engine by holding down E and you will also need to perform gear changes by using shift and control keys. Once you get into first gear, wait for the revs to max out and then start switching from second up to fourth. Always wait for the revs to reach their maximum before switching gears. Reverse is done by pressing control until you reach the reverse gear and then by pressing W which can be a bit counterintuitive. Drivers can also fire a machine gun using the mouse. Gunners control the turrets using WASD and can select between HE and AP rounds. As soon as you get into the tank, remember to press R to get the first round in the chamber, which you will also need to press to reload after each shot. Right clicking will fire your machine gun, so make sure you take out enemy infantry as well. The third position is the spotter, who can use a periscope to look around for enemy tanks and to let the driver know of any obstacles ahead, since the view from the driver's cockpit is very limited. A tank without one of these positions being manned is compromised by either lack of immediate mobility, firepower or visibility, so please tank in a full squad. Artillery is located at the start of the map, on your team's territory and can be manned by any type of soldier. However, in order to know where to shoot at, you'll need someone to place down a marker which you can then use to line up the artillery using the first position. You can do this on your own by opening the map and right clicking with your mouse and placing down a spotted marker. Once you do that and get into the first artillery position, you get a little table to the left that lets you know what angle you need to put the artillery at to hit the target based on the amount of distance that you need to cover. You then need to switch to the second position or use the help of a team member to load a shot, but firing is still done from the first position. Make sure the commander isn't saving up the ammunition resources that you can see by pressing M and checking the top of the screen for something else before firing off the artillery though. He might be saving them up to call in a bombing run. Okay, that will be all. That's pretty much everything that you need to know to jump straight in. If you have any other tips or recommendations for beginners, please leave your comment down below and remember that the relevance of the things that I say in this video can change over time as the game gets updated. I hope you enjoyed watching, please subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I hope I will catch you in the next one.